Have you ever had a tough time figuring out which Disney Resort would be your temporary home? Have you considered a split stay, but it sounds too complicated? Today on Walt Disney World Adults Only, we'll look at all that's involved. Welcome, Your Royal Highnesses. I'm Carol, and thank you for watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. I just recently returned from a trip that had a split stay. I want to tell you about my experiences, what I did right, and what I did wrong. But before we talk about that, why do people consider a split stay? Well, sometimes you just can't choose between two resorts and you want to experience both. Or maybe it's financial. You can't afford a deluxe for the whole trip, so you divide it with a deluxe and a moderate, or a moderate and a value, or a deluxe and a value. Your money goes a little farther that way. Maybe it's all about the location. So you know you want to use the Skyliner for part of your trip, and the monorail for part of your trip. Maybe your split stay is between two different places, Disney and Universal. All those things can make a split stay very attractive. Now, there's many things to consider when you're thinking about this split stay. First of all, park tickets. We all know park tickets are less expensive the longer period you book. So if you have a four-day stay at one resort and a four-day stay at another resort, you certainly don't want to book two four-day tickets. You want to book an eight-day ticket, which means you have to do that with the first resort you go to. And that eight-day ticket would cover both parks and you'd get the eight-day rate rather than the two four-day rate. However, that does require two separate reservations and two separate deposits. Now, there is a suggested order of the resorts you go to. If you're splitting between two deluxes or moderates, it doesn't matter. But if you are going to a deluxe and a value, you really want to do the value first and then go to the deluxe. And the reason for that is if you do the deluxe first, that value room is going to seem even that much smaller than it really is. And if you do the value first, you'll be tired towards the end of the trip and more likely to spend time at the deluxe resort rather than in the parks. Another thing to consider when you have this split stay is now you have two ADR dates, 60 days from the first resort and 60 days from the second resort. And instead of an eight day ADR window where you can book those better restaurants towards the end, now you have only two four-day stays, so you might not get the restaurants that you want to get. Then there's the packing for the two resorts, your luggage, how it gets from one place to another, packing up the first hotel and moving to the second. So that can be worrisome for some people. But I have a few suggestions. Now, if you purchase a souvenir cup, that $20 souvenir cup when the dining plan isn't available, it's only good for the resort you're at. So if you have two four-day stays and you want to use that souvenir cup, you really have to purchase two souvenir cups. One for the four-day stay, one for the second four-day stay. So now you're talking about $40 for a souvenir cup. So you have to think about that. So before I give you my thoughts on my recent split stay and tell you everything I did wrong, but still loved it, let's talk to some of our team members and see what they think. So Leanne, I don't think you've ever done a split stay. Are you against doing split stays or if you just haven't gotten around to it? I've never done a split stay and, and to be honest I don't really plan on. Split stays just aren't for me. 
I go for two weeks at a time, maybe three. And to be honest, I just don't want the hassle of having to move from one hotel to another. I know that Disney gives you the help, but it's also an excuse that I can just keep going back so I make sure I get all the Disney hotels. One of the other things that puts me off split stays is even if you love every single Disney hotel, you always have that favourite. And what if you go and your first hotel ends up being your favourite and then your second one just doesn't meet the same standards? It's going to be a little bit of a letdown and I just don't want Disney to let me down. So I'd rather it just be one complete blank canvas, spend my two weeks at wherever I'll be staying and then come back and try the next hotel the next time I come. Now, if I was forced into this question, which Carol is forcing me into this question, if I had to do a split stay, under what conditions would I do it? And I think if I was staying for a month or longer, then yes, let's add a little bit of a variety. You could have two two-week holidays just smushed next to each other, but due to work commitments, that will never happen for me. So, I'm stuck with just one hotel, one visit, and I'll just keep coming back. So, all in all, I think you've gathered that I do not have a high opinion on split stays. And it's kind of just one of them. Everybody has their own opinion, everybody has their own thoughts, and I know some people absolutely love them. But Taylor, I know you've done a split stay, it just wasn't at Disney, was it? Yes, Leanne, I have done exactly one split stay and that was a trip where I went to Disney and Universal Studios. We had always thought about doing a split stay but decided against it every time. But in 2019, when we had a much longer visit to Florida, we decided to finally go to Universal Studios. And that involved booking a split stay in order to reap the benefits of a Universal Hotel. For this particular split stay, as soon as we arrived at the Orlando International Airport, we got a lift and went directly to Universal, where we stayed at the Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort. Universal is extremely close to the airport, so you really don't have to worry about the transportation costs when it comes to Universal. Another reason that we decided on staying at two hotels during this particular stay is because we planned only one day for both Universal Studios and Island of Adventures. And one of the great perks of the Universal Deluxe Resorts is that you get the Express Pass included with your stay. Universal's Express Pass is their front of the line pass. And if you buy this pass outright, it can cost over $100 for the two parks on top of your park tickets. So that's a lot of extra money. We had a military discount for the Royal Pacific. So with that discount and that Express Pass being added, we really could not beat the price. One of the reasons I had avoided split stays up into that one and really have avoided them since is because when I get to my hotel, I like to just unpack and settle in. I don't wanna have to worry about my luggage and repacking it and making sure I have everything when I move to the next hotel. So for that universal stay, we just sort of lived out of our luggage for that one night, took out what we needed, packed it all back up nicely in the morning. So that way, when we were done with the parks that day, we just grabbed our luggage from luggage services and went to Disney. It was really easy and no hassle, but if I was staying for more than one night, I don't know if I would want to live out of my luggage like that. Another thing to consider is that Universal and Disney are really close together. So you don't have to worry about the transportation costs so much, but it is nice if you can get that express pass. So you really have to outweigh the costs and benefits of this. If you are planning a split stay with Universal and Disney, I would recommend putting the one that you are going to spend the least amount of time in at the beginning or the end of a trip, not necessarily in the middle. This will keep you from having to pack over and over again and move and worry about the transportation. This will also make sure you're not splitting up your Disney stays, which will help 
help with planning and making those ADRs. Overall, I think that split stay with Disney and Universal was a pretty good experience, but in the future, I would only do a split stay if I were visiting Universal again. When I visit Disney, I don't wanna have to think about packing. I want to leave that until the very last night. And when I'm visiting, I concentrate on the parks and relaxing, not necessarily the resort. The resort has never been the most important part of my vacation, but that's just me. Jackie, I think you have a split stay coming up pretty soon. Is that correct? Thanks, Taylor. As this video airs, I'm actually at Walt Disney World right now on my very first split stay. I'll be staying at Pop Century and the Polynesian. My current trip is my longest stay at Disney to date, 11 days. I'm taking advantage of this time to visit two of my favorite resorts. Pop Century is my go-to value resort. It's a bit more adult feeling than the other value resorts. If you want to learn more about Pop Century, check out Courtney's video. We'll put the link in the description below. I'm also staying the second half of my Disney vacation at the Polynesian Village Resort. I haven't stayed here since the 1990s. I thought it was high time to return. Booking wise, it was easy to book both resorts. For Pop Century, I went through Disney's website, which is always easy to plan. I'm an annual pass holder, so I was able to book a room only stay. For my time at the Polynesian, I decided to rent DVC points. It's a great way to save a little bit of money on the more pricier deluxe resorts. I booked through David's DVC rental website and it was a fairly easy process. The only drawback to this is you have to pay the payment upfront. You can't pay it off in payments like you do on the Disney website. So for booking my advanced dining reservation or ADR, it wasn't that terrible. Unfortunately, Disney doesn't recognize my entire one vacation. They see my stay at Pop Century and then they also see my stay at the VIP Polynesian Resort. So that means I had two different booking windows one week apart. The only bad thing about that was waking up early two times, but I got almost everything I wanted. The only hassle I can probably see is getting your luggage to Bell Services so they can move it from one Disney resort to the other. But then again, Disney is Disney and they are always fabulous. I will be dropping my stuff off at Bell Services before my Magic Kingdom day. So would I split my stay again? Probably as long as I was staying more than six days. That way I can actually get to enjoy each resort on their own. Carol, you just got back from a split stay. Was it worth it? You're right, Jackie. I just returned from a split stay and I did everything backwards I possibly could, but I had good reasons for it and I still loved it. So first I'll tell you the things I did wrong. We stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge for three nights. We stayed there first. When I first get to Disney, I want to be in the parks. I want to experience all the fireworks, all the rides I can, before I get too tired and have to take breaks. So that was a big mistake starting at Animal Kingdom Lodge because I had to force myself to stay there. Not that it wasn't fabulous, but if I had switched it around, it would have been better. It also gave me a four day booking window for ADRs. And then when we stayed 11 days at Pop, we had the longer ADRs. And that was okay. Um, surprisingly, I got several of the really popular restaurants in that four day period and the rest were in the 11 day period. So that really wasn't a problem. But again, if I had done the reverse, I would have had that 11 day at the beginning and then the four day at the end. And I would have had all the restaurants I really wanted to already before I got it to Animal Kingdom Lodge. And again, as I said earlier, going from that big, beautiful, well-decorated room to that small, teeny tiny, very clean, but teeny tiny value resort was not good. So why did I do it that way? There was a hundred dollar difference per night at Animal Kingdom Lodge if I had switched the order. So I figured for three hundred dollars that's a couple of pretty good meals and I could force myself to stay 
um, in the lodge rather than going to the parks from open to close for three days. I thought that was well worth it. I did make my ticket reservations from the first day at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So we had the, actually we did 10 days and then we had to do four days anyways because they only had a maximum 10 day ticket. Um, I had an annual pass, but my husband um, doesn't. So it was okay with the annual pass, but for him, we had to purchase a smaller ticket. What saved me going from resort to resort was packing cubes. If you've never used a packing cube, and I hadn't till two trips ago, they are fabulous. You fit so many more clothes in a smaller space. I don't know how it works. It must be magic or Disney pixie dust or something, but um, somehow it works. So what I did in my carry-on, I pretty much had everything packed for the three night stay, other than the toiletries that were larger than allowable by TSA. So I had my cosmetic bag I took out of the big suitcase, closed the big suitcase back up and didn't touch it at all while we were at Animal Kingdom Lodge. And that was due to the packing cubes. The other thing was that it really forced me to slow down at the beginning of the trip. I was able to enjoy the animals at Animal Kingdom Lodge, we enjoyed the pool, and I had more energy for the rest of the trip, because usually by the time I leave Disney, I need a vacation for my vacation. I didn't plan it that way, but it worked out well in the end. So my overall opinion, even though I did some things backwards, saved a lot of money and we were able to experience my dream park and we were able to experience my dream resort Savannah View Animal Kingdom Lodge that I wouldn't have been able to afford on a 14-day trip by itself by doing the split stay. It was wonderful. So if you can put up with the hassles of extra ADRs packing, it's well worth it. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it's given you some ideas of what to do and not to do during a split stay and maybe convince you to try it. If you have liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends to help them plan their most magical Disney vacation. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. The link to our adults only Facebook group is in the description below. Please join us there for more discussions on split stays other Disney topics. You won't regret it. And remember, never grow up.